There is no other figure in the Bible that is more mysterious than Melchizedek. Melchizedek is the most mysterious of all the characters. As soon as we meet him for the first time, he is living at the time of Abraham. Melchizedek is a name that brings with it an aura of mystery, even the name itself. He enters the canon of Scripture in a manner that is not overtly noticeable. Is he a woman? The question is, why is there so much talk about it? Scriptures from both the Old and New Testaments make reference to him. How come? In the beginning of our epic saga, there was a guy named Abraham. None of the characters from the Old Testament are referenced more often in the New Testament than Abraham, with the exception of Moses. In James 2 verse 23, James makes a reference to Abraham as God's buddy, which is a term that is not used by anyone else in the Bible. B. The Bible says in Galatians 3 verse 7, believers from all generations are referred to be the offspring of Abraham. The significance of Abraham and his influence on the course of redemptive history are made abundantly plain in the Bible. With God's favor, Abraham was the kind of person who might arouse the ever-vigilant gaze of rulers who were uncomfortable with their position. During that time period, God had instructed Abram to leave his homeland and his family in order to go to a place that he would show him. Both Abram and his nephew Lot departed from the place. The couple came to the conclusion that it would be better for them to go their own ways due to the significant rise in the number of animals owned by both Abram and Lot. In the aftermath of the divorce, Lot moved to the city of Sodom. Soon after, Lot found himself in a precarious situation due to his location. In the book of Genesis, chapter 14, we are given an account of the complex relationships that existed between countries at the time of Abraham. The Bible describes how the kings of Shinar, Alasa, and Goyim came together to create an alliance in order to fight against the kingdoms of Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, Zeboim, and Zor. Following a period of twelve years of oppression, these nations rose up and revolted. Following the dissemination of information on Keterlamer's victories, the rebellious nations assembled in the Valley of Siddim in order to face him. During the struggles that followed, Keterlamer was subjected to oppression by a number of different people, including the ruler of Sodom. Lot, the nephew of Abraham, who had been taking up residence in Sodom, was taken captive. Abraham was informed of the situation by a guy who had managed to escape from the camp where Lot and other people had been held captive. In an instant, Abraham gathered a group of 318 men and embarked on a mission to pursue the opponent. Abraham was able to restore the commodities that Keterlamer's army had taken and win the war against Keterlamer's forces. This victory was made possible on account of the favor of God. During the time when Abraham was making his way back through the Valley of Shave after he had triumphed against Keterlamer, the ruler of Sodom came out to greet him. In addition, Melchizedek, who was the king of Salem at the time, was there at that very location. For the very first time, we are able to communicate with Melchizedek, who is the personification of the correct meaning of his name. There are a lot of us who are not acquainted with the way names function in Hebrew. In addition to being descriptive, the names that are found in the Bible also bring with them an air of authority. Taking Adam as an example, the name that God bestowed upon him signified of the earth. The material from whence Adam was derived was detailed here. It is possible for a name to have some connection to the function that the person plays in a biblical story. One example of this is the case of Nabal, a stupid man whose name literally means fool. In the Bible, names may be used to illustrate predictions, reflect human aspirations, or reveal heavenly revelations. All of these things are possible. So, what exactly is the meaning of the name Melchizedek? In Hebrews 7 verse 2, the name Melchizedek is given a considerable amount of significance. According to Hebrews 7 verse 2 of the New American Standard Bible, to whom also Abraham apportioned a tenth of all the spoils, was first of all, by the translation of his name, King of Righteousness, and then also King of Salem, which is King of Peace. This verse describes Abraham before he became King of Righteousness. It may be translated as King of Righteousness, or more specifically, the King is Righteous. This name gives the impression that the person has a reputation for being just and fair in all of their transactions. 
When it comes to a monarch or leader who is committed to upholding justice and righteousness in his realm, this is an appropriate moniker. There is a saying that says, He is first, by translation of his name, King of Righteousness. To put it another way, the name Melchizedek was more than simply a name. It was also an appropriate appraisal of the character attributes that he had. He reigns as the King of Salem and the King of Justice. The book of Genesis chapter 14 verse 18 states that Melchizedek was the king of Salem at one point in time. It is said in Genesis 14 verse 18 of the New American Standard Bible that, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. Now he was a priest of God Most High. It is said four times in the Bible that Salem is mentioned, and three of these occurrences are in combination with Melchizedek as the king of Salem. Psalm 76 verses 1 to 2 is the only other passage in the Bible that makes reference to the city of Salem during this time period. It is written in Psalm 76 verses 1 to 2 of the New American Standard Bible that, for the music director, on stringed instruments to be used, the song that is a psalm of Azaph. In Judah, God is well known, and in Israel his name is revered much. Salem is the location of his tabernacle while Zion is the location of his dwelling place. In conclusion, the book of 2 Kings chapter 14 verse 20 reveals that Jerusalem is the city that David ruled over. As a result, the city that we now refer to as Jerusalem was once known as Salem until David ultimately seized possession of it and established it as the capital of Israel. Salem was ruled by a variety of heads of state during the course of its history. To shed light on the riddles surrounding Jesus, Melchizedek is used. Jesus Christ is the King of Peace, just as Melchizedek was the King of Peace in the Kingdom of Heaven. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6, the prophet Isaiah makes a prophesy concerning the coming Messiah. He says, For to us a child shall be born, to us a son shall be given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. It should be noted that peaceful does not imply simple. Jesus never promised that things would be simple. Rather, he merely offered assistance. Over the course of the Old Testament, we come across several depictions of Jesus in his role as a priest. Melchizedek is a significant figure who sheds light on a great deal of biblical truth concerning Jesus. Melchizedek's order was the first line of priests to be established. There were no Levitical priests at the time. Bread and wine are also included. Melchizedek is mentioned in Genesis 14 as having presented Abraham with food and wine. This is the second piece of information concerning Melchizedek that can be found in the Hebrew Bible. It is believed by biblical scholars that the Valley of Shave, which is also referred to as the King's Valley, was situated in close proximity to the southern region of Jerusalem. The first time Melchizedek met Abraham was at this location. By delivering food and wine to Abraham, Melchizedek was able to revitalize Abraham's troops and establish a positive bond with them. The genesis of their connection with Melchizedek may be traced back to this moment. During his reign as king of Salem, Melchizedek had a strong desire to cultivate a friendship with the one who had successfully overcome such a powerful alliance in the service of God. It is the priest of the Most High God. According to the verse in Genesis 14 verse 18, he served as a priest for the Most High God. The Holy Scriptures confirm that there is only one God who is supremely superior to all others. Thanks for watching. Please do well to subscribe to our channel and like and share our videos as this goes a long way to help us produce more contents like this.